What is going on guys, Scorpion Slayer 66 here, coming at you with the debut of a new series that I'm going to be entitling Essential Albums. So what I'm going to be doing with this series is every week I'm going to be talking about an album that I personally and many people would probably agree deem as Essential Albums, whether they be influential, just really great music, or some of my personal favorites. So I thought that I'd start off with an album that I've been listening to a lot lately, and that is Slint Spiderland. A little background on the album before we get into the actual music. Slint was a Kentucky-based rock band formed in 1987. They were pretty much pioneers of the genre known as math rock, which is a genre of rock music that's very post-rock inspired, kind of like Pink Floyd, but it's extremely mathematical, precise, so that's why it's known as math rock. And the band first released their debut album called Tweez in 1989. Not many people took notice, and even with their sophomore album, Spiderland, not many people noticed. Only 5,000 copies of the album initially sold, but much like the Velvet Underground's The Velvet Underground and Nico, it was an album that with time people started recognizing for its genius. So enough bullshit about the background of this album, let's get into the music itself. Starting off with track one, we have Breadcrumb Trail. The track opens up with this very lighthearted, lightly strummed, plinky guitar opener, and it gives you a very false sense of hope. If you really think that the album's going to be exactly like those first couple guitar notes, you're extremely wrong, because about a minute into the track, things quiet down for a couple seconds, and then out of nowhere, they just completely explode. All these fuzzy guitars, really heavy, dirty drums, and the bass is super distorted. It creates this very jarring contrast from the first 10 seconds of the album, and it's one of the best opening tracks of all time in my opinion because it tells you everything you need to know about the album right away. It's not going to be pretty, it's not going to be easy, and it's a very anxious sounding song. The lyrical nature of the song is pretty straightforward. It's about a young boy going to a carnival and meeting a fortune teller whom he starts to fall in love with, and eventually they start riding a roller coaster together. And that's kind of the perfect meetup with the instrumental because this entire instrumental is just a roller coaster. It has its very deep lows, but as soon as it gets into the speedy high up sections, it really creates an adrenaline rush of an experience. So fantastic opening track, tells you everything you need to know about the album. Track two is Nosferatu Man. And that is a very fitting title because all over this track, Brian is talking about the movie using imagery and even references from the movie. And it creates this very gothic nature to the song. And the way that the instrumental moves along from these really tinny opening drums to this really heavy bass groove and these really nice accompanying guitars kind of really fits with that gothic 1920s sound. You could totally see if somebody remastered Nosferatu with better imagery that this song would fit exactly with the movie. It's just so creepy and eerie without needing to tell you that it's creepy and eerie. The art speaks for itself, the instrumental makes you very uncomfortable, just like some of the parts of the movie, and it's an amazing track. So track two, Nosferatu, man. Track three is titled Don Aman. Don stepped outside. And this is probably one of the best songs on this album, objectively. It starts off with these very lightly done guitars, and Brian starts telling a story of a man who's at a house party, but he has to leave because he starts feeling very anxious and uncomfortable with the people. And he uses very chilling metaphors like talking about swimming underwater and things along those lines where you really don't think about them, but when they're put in front of your face, you realize how extremely dark, creepy, anxious these feelings are because if you were to dive underwater in the dark, you're completely sound devoid, you're completely vision devoid, and this song just really makes you feel like you're being closed in on by the world. And it creates this awesome, anxious, but also very nice guitar and drum bass section that really drives the point of the anxiousness of the song, but it also doesn't 
let you sit in it for too long. There's sections where the song is lighter and it makes you kind of reflect on what you were just feeling, but then it throws you right back into the fray. It's exactly like a panic attack would be, where you get really built up about things and then it goes away, and then you get built up again, and then eventually you just collapse from exhaustion, whether it be a crash or physically crashing from the exhaustion, going to sleep or whatever. So another amazing song, especially lyrically, that was Don Amon. Track number four is also known as Washer. My love, remember me as you fall to sleep. And this is one of the most interesting songs on the album for me because Brian's vocals are extremely different from any of the other songs. They have this almost childlike wonder to them where it's very upbeat, very ignorant to the world that's around him, and it's extremely interesting because the rest of it is so grounded in reality and talking about anxiousness and a lot of very adult things, but this vocal performance kind of brings it back to when he was younger and wide-eyed to the world. The lyrics are some of the best on the album, detailing a story of a man who is going through a very depressed and anxious time in his life and having to leave to go somewhere to get better but due to him having a significant other, he must leave her for a short period. So he's begging and pleading for this woman to not leave him while he's gone and to stay faithful and to keep loving him through these times, even though, you know, when you go through that, you feel like a piece of shit and that nobody loves you. But he's begging this woman to stay with him while he's gone, even though he needs help. And it's extremely chilling because again, it's very realistic, very grounded in reality. And many people can, attest to the fact that you know with mental illness and stuff like that it's really hard to keep in touch with people you love and to not feel like they always hate you and that they want to leave you all the time and it's an amazing amazing lyrical song and the instrumental fits it perfectly there's very low-key instrumental moments and then there's extremely furious moments of like wailing guitar fuzz noise just all the things that the album keeps as a fluent noise and it just builds to this perfect middle ground of feeling anxious having your low moments having these intense moments of emotion and it's a beautiful track in the most haunting way possible so great fucking track especially lyrically it's probably my favorite on the album lyrically that was washer track five for dinner is actually an instrumental track great about this is it is a master class song in terms of building tension. The song begins with these very menacing and heavy but very in the distance chords mixed with a little bit of tom hats and a really nice bass drum section but it keeps building and building and then it explodes but then it keeps retracting and it keeps doing it but it's in such a unnoticeable way or you don't think that wow these guys are just going up than going down. It feels completely natural and fluent throughout the whole track and it's an amazing work of instrumentals and especially on an album that's so heavy lyrically for them to be able to match that with a fully instrumental track is pretty fucking impressive. So great second to last track, track five for dinner. Ending off on the best note possible, this is track six, Good Morning Captain. <laughs> Before I get into this, I have to say this is my personal favorite song on the album, so I have a lot of bias towards it and I have a lot to say about it. First off, lyrically, this is again one of the more interesting songs on the album because they're telling a story of a captain who's lost everything. His ship was in a storm, so he's lost the ship, the crew, everything that ever belonged to him, everybody that he's ever loved. So it's this extremely chilling tale of him having to go through all the emotions that go with it. You know, anger, fury, depression hopelessness, all of these things. And again, it's in such a human way where it doesn't feel like they're just like, oh, this guy has a shitty time, feel bad for him. They make you really think like, wow, if I was in this certain situation, this is exactly how I would be. I would be searching for people even though I know they're probably all dead. And it's this beautiful instrumental that uses a lot of boat sound effects, bells, horns, that kind of stuff. And mixed with like 
the pounding of bass that's all over this song and the really amazingly beautifully plucked guitars. It just creates, again, an eerie, creepy, anxious atmosphere that fits the lyrical content perfectly. And it's just the best way to end because, again, it rounds from the first song all the way to the end in this beautiful full circle perspective. And what, again, one of the best closing tracks in history, in my opinion, it really ends on the highest note it possibly can. And it tells you in summary what you just listened to with seven minutes. So amazing ending song that was Good Morning Captain. So there's really not much else to say about the album. It's a tight six tracks at about 40 minutes and each song is perfect in their own regard. They really didn't have any room to fuck up and they didn't. And what's cool about this is, again, they weren't recognized right away, but as time went on, people started seeing how much this changed everything. They took Pink Floyd influence, but they made it dark, real, human, extremely precise, and again, they pretty much created the genre of math rock and it's a beautiful engaging piece of music and it's inspired everybody from Mogwai to Godspeed You Black to Emperor to thousands of other indie and mainstream artists so it's definitely an essential listen for me I think most people would agree with me on that as well and I think that you guys should listen to it immediately it's on all streaming services the full albums on YouTube it's on vinyl it's really cheap on vinyl and CDs so I definitely implore you guys to listen to this album if you haven't. Uh, even if you don't suffer from things like anxiousness and depression, it's a really beautiful piece of music that allows you to feel these things but not necessarily have to be in that same headspace as these people. So one of my all-time favorite albums, this was Slint Spiderland. Let me know down below, guys, what are some albums you would like to see here? What are your thoughts on this album in specific? Am I dumb? Did I miss something? So. Leave your suggestions down below in the comment section, and while you're down there, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, guys, take care.